sorry we were a little bit late getting started, but um, are we are we ready to jump in or mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. Chair, do you wanna uh, okay. jump right in? Okay. So um, we were kind of up to part three of this discussion. Did we have any questions from anybody's thought of from the last time we met? Okay. Yeah. Please interrupt me as we go along. Um, so I, I think clarity of where we're going and who's responsible for what is really important. Uh, I do want to understand the board's way of work and what they are expecting uh, from me and how the, the superintendent and I interface with each other. Um, so please give me that feedback as we go along um, because I want to deliver your legal services the way you need them to. Um, there are, you know, obviously some different lanes on Florida statute, what the superintendent's responsible for versus what the board is responsible for, and we'll kind of touch on that here. Um, if any of, uh, there's a really good um, um, presentation that FSBA does on this topic. Yeah. Um, Andrea Messina has the slide about stay in your lane. You know, the, some of these yeah. slides kind of expand on that. But, you know, it's the board's responsibility about setting policy and the, the, those are the board's policies. Mm -hmm. So um, you do want to have ownership of those, make sure that they reflect uh, what it is that the, the, the priorities and the way of work that you want to do within Florida law. Um, then we also have some general powers of the school board that are outlined in statute in addition to determining policies and, and setting rules for the district. That's why you do that chapter 120 rulemaking, <coughs> first reading, second reading, those kinds of things. Um, although that was one of the things that was discussed for this legislative session and the idea that they were going to um, cut down on the amount of restrictions put on boards, um, maybe getting out of having to do chapter 120 rulemaking every time you want to <laughs> change a policy or change the student code of conduct or things like that. Um, the, the deregulation, that was at least on the list. Um, not sure how far that's going to go this session or not. Um, but obviously when you're entering into contracts, that's entered with the, the board. We should not have any of our high school principals or, or any school-based principals signing contracts for things. Hopefully we are have a good, pretty good process for that. That all needs to run through the district office. Um, that's how you, know, you find out that bounce houses and other right. stuff have been set up on campuses and the principal has signed that and they really should not be doing that because um, that can lead to personal liability right for the sure signing it um, well Shaka, do you know I'm sorry to interrupt sure do you know is that pretty much understood across the board I know everybody does their own school-based activities and things like that but <clears throat> yes that that is um, pretty understood in um, Guess it's been maybe like two years ago um, we were in a situation like that where I don't think that understanding was there but um, yeah that's why I'm yeah, that yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. and teachers understand that as well we um, this earlier this year we did some clarification around um, the process that anybody should go through if they wanted to utilize our name, our logos, any of um, those things. Um, that is one that we have to constantly do refreshers on because I think people think that they can just kind of make a flyer and right, put, put, us, put us on there. And um, so we have done some refreshers on that this year around um, the process that they would need to go through if they needed to use our letterhead or if they needed to use any of our, our signage. Right, and teachers our would reading. not sign for something like a balance oh. house. No, okay. all of that goes through um, our bookkeepers and our, our administrators, any fundraisers or any of those things. Great. And, and it's not, <clears throat> um, it doesn't completely exonerate us if the Education Foundation or a somebody who's in charge of an SAC or somebody like that kind of sets it up because we know on the bounce house example it's still going to be teacher volunteers or our employee volunteers are kind of overseeing that right. and so I would see the district could get pulled back into a lawsuit on those kinds of things even though we had as the district had not signed the contract in the first okay, place. Okay so that you bring up an interesting point so if the Ed Foundation as a separate nonprofit mm -hmm. and the governance board of the auditorium mm -hmm. right because they're both separate entities under our umbrella 
I would, if they got sued, they could still pull us in. Well, look, the bounce house example is one that I've seen. So let's stick right. with that, um, which may not apply exactly to what you're talking about. But the contract for the bounce house that's signed by, let's say, an, a parent support organization, right. um, not the district, the contract's going to say, well, it has to be staffed by an adult. We know that that's probably going to end up falling to, at least for a portion of the time, our employees. Employee We're going to have a teacher there who's providing that supervision. And so if a student or some visitor to campus were to get injured in that process, they would sue the contracting entity, but then they would also end up suing the district for providing the improper supervision at the time and not up to the standard of the contract. Let me ask the question a different way. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The Ed Foundation and the Governance Board, mm -hmm. the auditorium, are those contracts, any contracts that they're dealing with, are they coming through us? Mm -mm. So who's signing them? Any um, any of the events that the Ed Foundation is doing, all of that is being done through the Ed Foundation. If the Ed Foundation was going to utilize our facilities, then they would, you know, do facilitron like yeah, normal yeah. Mm -hmm. with that type of. But if, for instance, we just did Mardi Gras. Whatever contract was signed with the Teresa venue, is signing it. That's through the Education Foundation and their board. Mm -hmm. We do. We did not sign anything as far as um, I got contracts you. related. But for liability purposes, we Plus. would be protected because of the nonprofit status. <laughs> it would depend. <laughs> it would, not it, it, it would depend on on what happened, what the circumstances were, and what the contract said. And, and is there a way to say that the district had some sort of involvement with it? Now. I think through Facilitron and our facilities use agreements, it makes it clear that the district has to be named as an additional insured. Mm -hmm. um, so that would provide us a level of protection where okay. the district wouldn't have to be stepping in. Um, if it's a facility thing, hey, their lighting on these steps was poor and that's why I fell, um, that could, I could see us that. as the owner of the premises. Sure could get pulled in that way, hopefully that yeah. insurance policy would. I could totally see that, okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. um, and we can run some like specific examples through, through, you know, to make sure that we have the, the procedures that we need um, in place. Yeah, maybe for our most um, scheduled and repetitive events, we might look at those um, to make sure that we, we are in a, in a place where uh, we limit our liability as much as possible because we know we're going to do those annually. So yeah, that's why I'm trying just to just curious. I'm just curious. Yeah, that's yeah. me too. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, anybody who's willing to pay the filing fee can file a lawsuit, and then you've got to be in a position to defend it. How good of a lawsuit is depends on a ton of different factors. Okay. So that first line of protection is if you are initially named and insured through Facilitron through the facilities use agreements. Um, you can let some other lawyer figure out the nuances of whose responsibility it was, right. not on the district's yeah. dime. So, okay. Um, so, some more things that that boards do, obviously, when we're engaging in real estate transactions, um, or we're just establishing and organizing and adopting the plans. You know, the board sets the direction, and the superintendent implements. Now, I when I try to explain it to my non-school friends how this works that you're the CEO but you're the board who sets the direction and that um, <clears throat> so there are so many obligations or responsibilities of board members they don't fit into all one statute I don't know why they wrote like three of them but there's a long laundry list and uh, another one of the highlights obviously is overseeing the budget <coughs> and setting the direction that the board is going there's a phrase, don't tell me about your values, show me your budget. Yeah. That'll um, tell you your values. That, that will demonstrate what the board is prioritizing. Okay, shifting gears, the superintendent's responsibilities, administrative management, that executive officer function that we touched on. Um, uh, the Definitely when it comes to human resources issues, um, making nominations for employee positions, um, just basically organizing the way of work of the <coughs> district once you've gotten that direction from the board. Um, 
through strategic planning and, and the budgetary process. Um, but overseeing day-to-day -day, uh, work of personnel, um, that's a really important one. Um, but definitely to cooperate with the board um, to continuously improve the district. Um, things that I have seen work well, um, and when I have looked into this issue, there's the there's an organization called the Council for Great City Schools, um, and that they kind of provide advice. It's kind of a clearinghouse of information for like the 20 largest districts in the nation. And um, there, I'm not calling out any particular districts, but there are some districts that are on that list that have nine, 10 hour meetings, you know. Um, the, the advice from, from this particular organization, I think it's good advice, is um, how much meeting time is spent on student achievement. That's the core function, the core mission that we're trying to accomplish. Um, and so that is something to consider, you know, as um, the board is, is working through its agendas and, and working on that. I don't mean to say at all, I mean, you're, if not the largest, you gotta be one of the largest employers in the county. There's a whole lot, you own one of the largest landowners, um, <coughs> largest transportation fleet. You know, there's a lot of things going on with delivering our kids safely to and from school and educating while, them, while they are there. Um, so there's a lot of moving parts to that. Um, but, you know, wartime core function, met, make the main things be the main thing, um, would be some advice that I would share. And I have seen other districts kind of strive for. Um, strategic planning process, I'm still learning about how that works in the district, but I think that's really important. Um, you know, that's when all this, whoever is in this role, but your superintendent cannot be effective for you if she is getting pulled in five different directions and everybody's got a, a, a personal priority rather than a board priority that they are trying to implement. Um, so the strategic planning process can hopefully build that consensus um, and y'all can focus on what your core priorities are. Um, everybody's not gonna get everything that they want, but if the superintendent knows, hey, this is what we've got consensus on that we're really trying to achieve, um, she can be much more effective. Um, and then for consideration, it doesn't have to be a discussion, but I would certainly you know, think on this question about um, what does it mean after votes taken for the board to take ownership of, of the board's decision, even if it wasn't your individual vote on something. Um, that's a mark of a board that is um, well-functioning. Okay. Um, and, and that's just in my personal belief, you know, that's why if there is a board member that feels strongly about something, it's the, you know, not my personal belief, but advice I've seen from FSBA and other organizations, you know, if you go ahead and get that on the agenda, let it have the up or down vote, and then um, the district moves forward based on the outcome of that. So um, just a couple of scenarios, I think if anybody wants to weigh in on any of these things, um, but interactions with community members when, when they are approaching um, with concerns about um, how a teacher is doing or how an employee of the district is behaving. There are some uh, board members that, uh, not, I'm not suggesting anybody necessarily in this group, but just in 25 plus years of doing this, I've seen board members in other districts um, you know, immediately want to sort of take the reins in that situation and start making phone calls and really starting, to, well, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. You know, but that's a personnel issue, like we were talking about, it's a personnel issue by statute. So that's, my advice would definitely be we need to pass along those scenarios to the superintendent, because she has an apparatus and actual people as an HR team that can get to the bottom of a situation if it needs to be addressed. Um, and the other thing that when I've had to counsel board members in situations like that, uh, you know, what are, what are the odds that you're getting the whole story in the first place when, when someone's coming to you and saying, I'm being treated terrible, terribly as an employee and my principal's bad or whatever the situation is. Um, it's, it's unlikely that that board member is getting all the information. Um, so um, that was kind of the, the end. I think HR is an area where that comes up frequently, sometimes on student issues, student parent issues, but I think if we could funnel those to the superintendent so she can get her team um, to work on it. 
anything else that anybody needs to hear from on me or questions or thoughts that you'd like to discuss <coughs> with yourselves? I think it would be interesting, Lashaka, to just hear as a new superintendent, have you hit like any, has there been any points or times where there's been confusion for you, right? That's probably a loaded question. It's not a loaded so, question. So I'm being serious. Over, I think it is. <laughs> no, but no, in seriousness though, is, is there, have there been times, and it, you don't have, we're not talking about particular board members, but just that it's not clear, the line's not clear. Um, there are definitely times where um, I feel like the information did not come directly to me so that I can act on it or whatever. Um, I think, you know, that's something we definitely have to just continue to work on that if there is a question, you know, and I'm not saying that it all has to always go directly to me, but to staff to actually right. be uh -huh. able, and when I say staff, I'm talking about senior leadership, yeah. um, those in individuals who are sitting on senior cabinet so that we can actually do the work mm -hmm. and, and get to the bottom of it. Um, there are definitely times that we can do, do better um, with that. Yeah. And as board, new board members, because I know after all this time, there are still times that I question myself to say, am I in the wrong lane here? <laughs> is, this, is this my lane or is this outside my lane? Personnel is usually like if you have HR issues, because you're right, you're never going to get the whole story from either <coughs> side. Right. So that becomes a real challenge for me. But do you guys, are there any things that are, con you know, you're not sure which lane or whatnot? I just, I always include like y'all on an email if someone comes to me, but I do want to be available if somebody says, can you please call me? You yes. Know, there's been those times, but I still have to redirect them to the district, you know. And I think that's appropriate. <laughs> You're an elected official. You have every right to have a conversation yeah. with, I'm always going to, I think all of us are of that mindset. We're probably always going to have a conversation. And I think that you guys do a really good job <coughs> of having those conversations with community members or and parents. Mm -hmm. I think another thing that you do um, a great job with in, in that area is um, following up with us to make sure that it's being it gets done. done. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important, right? That yeah. level of accountability. Um, also, you know, not to, to make sure it's done, but also that those individuals know mm -hmm. that it has been addressed or their point has been heard or, yep. or, or whatever. So I, I do think that um, as a board, that is definitely a strength that you guys will um, send, especially parents, like mm -hmm. send parents yeah. our direction. I think we just have to keep that at the forefront of our minds sure. so that um, I <clears throat> or you never feel like we're working in an opposition of it. You know, even if it's, a continued conversation that you're going to have just me being along in the loop to know that it's happening right. um, I think it's just helpful yeah. for our staff for sure. yeah and I, I from my perspective you know any <coughs> communication that comes from the public the first thing that I start with is that they matter their concern matters right whether or not I agree with it or not doesn't matter. And also, if I happen to have more information than them about it, it doesn't matter at, at that moment, right? Uh, so we, we need to engage the, the individual, uh, whether it's a parent, community member, um, as, you know, hey, we're here, we're elected to serve you, and then help them get it to where it can best be answered. And, and, and the best practice that I've always done <coughs> is even if I thought maybe something is best for uh, John Finelli, right? Uh, I will. I might forward an email on to because it sounds like it's his, his, his department, his, yeah. but I'll always copy um, the superintendent or others in there so that if that could better handled by somebody else, they'll chime in and and, and redirect that. And you and that's happened before where they, somebody else that I thought um, was best suited was not, and they, and they the, the right party yeah. did. Yeah. So I think that 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 is a, just my best practice that I've. Uh, um, into yeah. Practice, yeah. So. When I get complaints, most of the time it's from parents and it's little things. And mm -hmm. what I always do first is redirect them back to their school, to their principal, to the, you know, to the, recently there was a situation with how they recorded an absence or, no, it was clothing. The kid would got a reprimand for what they, she was wearing. Got to go back to the school. And actually when I explain that to the parent, 
they understood. Mm -hmm. They realized that that's the right thing. So you don't start here, you start there and talk to that and the counselor who wrote it up or whatever to see if you can have a conversation and work it out that way. That's the very first thing that I think you should always want to redirect it back, then take it. You know, a lot of them we can't. A lot of them have to go to people, you know, in the, the upper administration so they can figure things out. And I think that, uh, that seems to work quite well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they're going to get the fastest result usually <coughs> if it's dealt with right there the people closest to the map. Mm -hmm. so oh, yeah, I absolutely. Yeah. I think being sure to just make sure people feel heard mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. and understood yep, yep, yep. and not to be in, in a response defensive. I think that's important. And that's, um, we talk about flag law forward, and I know um, Dr. Conklin, you guys just sit in on one of the flag law forward um, sessions, but that's really what we're talking about is like how do we engage yep. with our stakeholders, be it internal or external stakeholders, setting the expectations for how they follow up with those individuals, um, how they provide the information <laughs> to them, just so that um, our stakeholders know if I go to the board chair or if I go to the superintendent or the chief of HR, they're going to respond to me, you know, they're going to validate um, their, their concerns and listen to them as well as follow up um, with them. And so we try to run a healthy balance of if someone puts you into an email, you know, we, we try to keep that healthy balance of when do we just continue to keep the board in there? We want you to know that we've addressed it, but we also don't want you to feel like you have to be just kind of strong along on, as the, the district just continues the work of it. Um, so we're trying to keep that he healthy balance um, as well, because we want people to know, absolutely, go to your board members, um, come to staff members um, as well. We just want to make sure we're listening and that we're responding appropriately to any of our stakeholders, regardless of who yeah. they go to. And I think as far as bringing issues forward to the board, I usually try to, if, if, if you're hearing, if I'm hearing a situation like three from three different people, then that peaks my. I'm. What's going on here? Like, what's what's happening here? Do we have to have a board discussion about it after, of course, sharing with the superintendent? Um, so yeah. And I, I've had I've had a good experience with uh, the superintendent and and the staff when, on the follow up of things and getting re response back with the outcomes. And I and I, I and what I do see also is the. Um, how meaningful the responses are. They're not just like, oh, thanks for, for sending this, we'll get back to you sometime in the future. There is clear re outreach to these uh, parents and constituents. Yeah. So um, I don't necessarily see it. this is an area where we're lacking, but it's a good one that we're revisiting to uh, to definitely you know build off of it, right? Because mm -hmm. we can always be better in everything, so. Yeah. That's all I had. I was hoping to I, I have, generate this discussion, so. I, I have a question. Who's responsible for policing the school board? What do you? We have responsibilities which we just went through, mm -hmm. and sometimes, often, we have individuals who are not participating or not attending. Or so, whose responsibility is that? I mean, they're they have the same statutory responsibilities as everybody here. We have, we've gone through that. We know what they are. And, you know, I've never seen so many absences in a year plus. I've never had a school board person utilize automated responses ever on their email. So that's directly affecting our constituents. Well, let's who's not call out individual board members. No, I'm not. But who's but who's yeah, responsible your for about, your first question? Yeah. I think is who's responsible for policing the responsibilities of the school board? It really comes down to, I mean, the, the bare bones answer is elected officials in Florida are subject to temporary removal by the governor and trial in the Senate. Um, the type of issues that you were just describing in my experience has not risen to the level that any governor no, has ever wanted to uh, engage with that so um, that leaves potentially censure by uh, 
other board members, you know, you can have a motion to censure, and I, I have seen some um, districts use that. I've seen some districts sort of misuse that as a tool. Right. Um, I, I, it's it, it can be obviously very divisive. Right. Um, so it it really comes down to Florida law puts a lot of um, authority and trust in the judgment of the voters to pick their elected representatives and the typical way that issues like that, if the voters are not happy, it gets resolved at the ballot box. And that's four years. That's, <clears throat> it's more of an election issue than a <coughs> right. board members right. policing right. each other issue. Right, because it's, it's <coughs> becoming a chronic problem for us. We're, we're a four person board most of the time anymore. I think part of it, and that's difficult, it's difficult because we can end now, a lot of situations are gonna end in a dead vote which is going to hurt moving the district. And that concerns me. Uh, you know, go ahead. I would just throw this out for, for consideration. I, a censure to me is a divisive tool, I agree. Right? No, I agree. And so you want to get to a place where you're a healthy board, right? Respectful of each other. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, it may be simply, obviously, this is a known issue. And it's, okay, well, why isn't somebody here? Why are they not comfortable being here, mm -hmm. trying to get to the root cause of mm -hmm. some of those things, and then dealing with those so everybody feels welcomed at the table? Right. Right. Well, let's deal with them with the more of the the the, the 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 issues that could come of that at a business meeting, right? Because so we have um, only because we, we 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 it's been made clear that Ms. Hunt has said she she she's li likely going to not finish her term. We don't know when that might be. But in the event that that happens, and uh, whether it, it is, is a, an election or a government government appointment, governor's appointment, which I, I've read the statute, and it clearly says government appointment, so governor's appointment, so I assume that's how it would be filled. But there may be time for that to happen. Well, we're going through a meeting in, in, in the case where we have four, how do we deal with, with the vote with an even number? Um, You've got to have a majority for a Consensus. recommendation to pass. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so it's a majority of so it will a quorum. Mm -hmm. um, so it's two two is so, dead. Right. We've already established that. Right. So that's why I'm concerned. You can see where I'm going with this. I'm, I mean, we've been dealing with this for a year and a half or whatever. So let me ask this. So that's my concern. I mean, yeah, but yeah. you can see where I'm going down the road. We have some important things coming up, and we may not agree. Uh, that's obvious, and we may agree. We don't know. <laughs> but to get, we need three. What is the process if someone um, decides to leave, since it's been publicly stated? Mm -hmm. If a board member decides to leave, what is the process so after that? There'd be an official, no process starts until there's a resignation right. from office. And then um, the governor's office is alerted, and sometimes there's a um, quick appointment, and I've seen appointments linger for more than six months. The last time this happened was they when were, Peter yeah, Palmer passed exactly. away and we had a governor appointee, but that did take a good period of time. Mm -hmm. Because we're so close to an election, would they allow this seat to run in an election? You know what, though, Colleen, not the last time this happened. The last time this happened was when Andy resigned. That's the last time this happened. Andy resigned and he left two years. That's what Jill ran with me. But that, but but Jill that ran seat with me. went into an election. The only time yes, we've ever because, had. Yes, because it could yes, go into yes. an election. So yes. my thoughts are, depending on the timing of the situation. So it must be allowed. It, it is, but it depends how close it is to if they could possibly run an election. So if not, there, then it becomes an appointment. Is there like a, a clear answer? Is like by the by the qualifying date? Or yeah, my guess is there's that there's got to be some. So they have time to put them on the ballot. Yeah. Is Miss Hunt's seat up for election? No, no. no. Okay. She just was elected. So I would have to research this again, but I believe that it would be the governor's appointment. I, I would want to be sure about this. This is one of those things I'm 90% sure about, but I don't think that there would be a special election and there would Not be a special election. No, because there's an election ran. coming up. I, we, under, yeah. yes, it please. wasn't a special election when, when <coughs> Andy Dance resigned, mm -hmm. okay, from here. Mm -hmm. They had, there was still two years left in his term, mm -hmm. which would be the exact same situation we have looking here. Mm -hmm. But there was enough time to add them to that, add that position mm -hmm. so that they, people could then run for that position and then were elected to a two-year two term right. as opposed to a four. So uh, I know, for instance, if <laughs> the governor 
does appoint um, someone to an empty seat and there is less than um, than half the amount of the term left, that person would have to run uh, again at the next mm -hmm. election. Mm -hmm. um, that part I'm clear about, I remember, mm -hmm. yeah. from the statute. Mm -hmm. There must be a time frame or something. I'm not it sure. has to be the qualifying date because they've got, I mean, you have to think of the election office, they've got to get the information on the voter so ballots. Happened. Yeah, so the it has to be. The exact same thing kind of happened. It, it's mm -hmm. a timing thing. It's strictly a timing thing, depending when it, and Andy knew that's why he did that so they could get a special election so somebody could fill a seat but in I, two years. I, I believe Andy did that like a good full year out, didn't he? Uh, <coughs> no, there was months. I mean, he knew when he had to give t give his, because his, he was running for a county commission seat. And he could still be a school board member until such and such a date. And that was a date, drop down date that he knew he had to li literally resign here so they could get it on the ballot. I don't mean to short circuit any of that discussion. I'm, I'll take some notes and I can report back to the board on that issue. Okay. Um, but going back to the strategic plan, hopefully the vast majority of the things that the superintendent is going to bring to you as a board, you have achieved some consensus on that, hey, these are the, our priorities as a district. These are the things that we want to focus on in terms of student achievement or uh, our on-time percentage for our transportation mm -hmm. department or whatever it might be and when the superintendent is bringing you recommendations that will help implement what you've agreed to that you want that's I think that's, I, I, I think think that's so great too. guidance because yeah. if you want to bring something forward tying it to the strategic plan makes sense it, if it can't tie too. to the strategic plan then that may just be a one-on-one -on -one conversation mm -hmm. right there are some districts that every single item on the agenda has a reference a back to the strategic. I think ours does. Yeah. 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 yeah, we did that a while ago. Yeah. And our schools <coughs> now as well are tying their things to the strategic Recommend plan. Their requests. Um, mm -hmm. As well. So our strategic plan right now is in its final year in its current form. We're actually going to be bringing the strategic plan to you in March um, with um, here's where we are with the current strategic plan and um, likely some recommendations for some adjustments and the, um, some recommendations around the strategic plan um, in general. So that'll be coming in, in March. But it is an opportunity for uh, us to ensure that it still reflects what it is that the board is passionate about and what you want us to be working on. Um, a couple weeks ago, I think it was, um, a board member brought to me um, a magazine around like the yearbook of, of, the, of the, the area. And um, I just think that it's important, especially as we talk about our board mem meetings, we're doing our best with our board me meetings to get the information on there, including the agenda, all of the presentations. Um, when we do board briefs, we will foresight to you guys some additional things that are going to um, uh, be coming up. But as we continue, we learn to work together, really just making sure that we are a board that is being efficient and we're being effective in the way that we that we work. Uh, um, I think the review that was given around the parliamentarian procedures um, are important for us to ensure that we all know <laughs> how the board is going to function when, when we're here. So going back to your statement, Dr. Conklin, that all of our board members know that they can show up and this is going to be an orderly environment. It's going to be an environment that we may disagree at, but it's going to, always going to be professional and they know what to expect as far as um, the parliamentary and procedures side of, of things. I think that's super important. And, and as a board member, it's, it's a different kind of job. And, and I don't think anybody realizes it until you sit in the seat and you go from being a private citizen to being a very public citizen. And public that feels very much like they have a right to say and do anything that they want. And so it, it, it is a difficult transition. I, I, I still find it difficult. Um, but I've been part of very dysfunctional boards. And 
a part of really great, highly functioning boards. And it does have a trickle down effect. Mm -hmm. It trickles down to staff, it trickles down to schools, it trickles down. You think it doesn't because you sit in a room and we have conversations or disagreements or whatnot, and that it certainly it doesn't leave this chamber, but it really, truly does. Um, people become uncertain. They're not sure what direction we're going in, who, what's going to happen at this meeting, and it just leaves everybody feeling on edge. And it really does trickle down. Mm -hmm. I've seen, um, when you have teachers even talking about, you know, it's, it's just not a healthy thing for the board. It's better for us all to figure out how to get along mm -hmm. than, than it is to argue. <clears throat> Yeah. Well, you know, one thing I'll say is that the, as you mentioned about, you know, what, what direction we're going in, you know, th that, that can change at any given time based on new information that comes in. And, I, and, I, and I, it is helpful when, when maybe staff or, the, or, or our organization can see where we might be headed on an issue. I will say, though, that we, we you, know, uh, you know, we do a lot of workshopping. We don't, we're getting better. I think that it is... Uh, the conversation, it, the, the free flow of, of conversation, I think we've all done, uh, we've always made it open and available, right? Uh, everybody has the, the, the right to be heard on a, on a matter. Mm -hmm. And I just encouraged all board members to, to speak their mind and say, hey, this is what I feel, because that is what I build off of. And there's many times that um, I may have seen something one way, and then because that board member spoke up and brought another perspective and I'll, I'll use I'll use the star lab as a perspective you know like you know I was really looking at it from you know usage and dollars and cents and everything and then you brought up the per student cost and I said you know and and then when the, when staff said yeah this is gonna this is gonna run the whole district I mean this is not just gonna be for the elementary I mean it's gonna go everywhere yeah. and then you looked at the student cost and it was pennies yeah. and and then the, then you could see what a great value educational value this had for the whole organization, yeah. right? Yeah. And, the, and so that's why I just think it's important that we, we don't hold back. And we also have to, as a board, and I'm not saying this has necessarily always happened, but you know, we have to be respectful of the other people's opinion because if, if they feel like they're going to be uh, criticized for thinking differently, then, um, then they, they, they might not share it, right? Yeah. And that's, that's really hurts a board's growth, yeah. um, you know? So, but I think overall, even from the beginning, we've just by the length of our um, our board meetings, we've had a lot of information put out on the table, right? Yeah. Uh, we all have to glean off of it and then make our own decisions. Yeah. So, yeah. And we, as a, a, a district, you know, will continue to get better with that, mm -hmm. making sure that you have all of the information that you need, mm -hmm. and we're okay. And there have been times that you know, you've pushed us to go back, get some more, and come back to the table. I think that has to be looked at and viewed as healthy. Because if it is ever feeling like, well, you've come to the table and you don't have all the things that we need, and maybe new information or different information that we're, we haven't prepared enough for, it, I, that's why we have our workshop structured the way that we have them because we can bring something to you essentially twice before you get to it for a vote and it's okay if we need to use all of that time right. versus you know you get it that one time and then okay it's all there it's it's ready and we can move forward um, and so as a as a staff we're okay with that we want that we want you to say hey go back and give us clear direction but sometimes when um, we are not in my opinion, like following um, a clear procedure when it comes to like how we operate behind Robert's rules or parliamentarian procedures, we get confused on what the direction is. And then board members feel like, well, I ha we haven't done what you've asked for us to do. Well, maybe it was our understanding that that wasn't something that needed to be brought back immediately, or it was something that needed to be brought back in this direction. It's, it's helpful for us to make sure we're following those procedures and then we can have an opportunity to clarify and say okay just for clarification this is the direction that the the staff has so that we can actually go forth and do what it is that you're asking right. us to do right yeah I, I would say overall most presentations um, 
from staff have been great. And uh, but sometimes I feel like there's a little extra fluff in there that doesn't need to be there, right? And it's not a, it's not a, a, uh, it, it's just kind of human nature when we're preparing a presentation. And I'm just speaking from from myself, right? And everybody can chime in on this. But you know, I'm looking for actionable that actionable information, the, the nuts and bolts of the situation. Now we want to hear some victories and wins and there, but in the end we need summarized data that we can make decisions on because that oftentimes is what we're sending you back for, right? Mm -hmm. is, is, is for that, that information. So um, I would say, if you, in my view, looking at it from that framework is that I, I would hope at the end um, I, if, if there's numbers involved, we should see the, 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 the hard numbers at the end. If, we're, if there are um, issues involved, we should see the hard issues that, that involved that we have to make clear, decisive decisions on. That would just be helpful in moving things forward, yeah. right? So, go ahead. Can I just share, uh, you, what you're saying just brought to mind something, and this is why I think workshops really are important, because it's the only time you really kind of get to know each other. Um, people don't realize that. It's very isolating on the board as well. But I think I was, it was my first term on the board and we did a personality, FSBA did some sort of personality thing, right? Mm -hmm. So you would get to learn what the personality of your fellow colleagues are on the board. And I remember from that meeting, Andy, uh, not Andy, um, Eddie Herrera, was basically like that. He wanted the data, he wanted the numbers, he wanted, you know, that kind of thing. And for me to know that that is just his personality. That's what he wants to know. I want, I want the feel good stuff, right? The, I want to see the kids. I want to do whatever. I want data though, right? And you might learn that somebody else wants something or somebody else, th this is their way of work. And it was so valuable. I, I'll, I mean, till this day, I remember that conversation. Mm -hmm. And it was a totally different perspective. I viewed him through a totally different lens moving forward. Um, so that's why I think retreats are really so valuable. Well, you know what, too, we also did it in Masterboard. Yes, yeah. Masterboard does the same we thing. You usually they, do it all they, the time. Yeah, they go through and you figure out, I'll never forget the Masterboard and you and a colleague. And when they, <laughs> they generally did not get along very well, but then when they tested they tested almost identical, which is interesting. Yes, very interesting. Inter yeah. It was interesting because <laughs> they're very different people, yeah. but that led to a lot of conversations. So master board yeah. is another way of And of it helps bridge those, skills. Mm -hmm. those gaps. Yeah, it does. And, and I, I've done those personality tests, and, and there's several of them out there. And, mm -hmm. and it is quite interesting when you dive It when really you, is. That you, you do go, wow, I guess I kind of do. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. to think that way and if you remember we did uh, not all of us um, did it but we did it at the beginning because what I remember about um, you mr. furry is that you were the same number on every all of the different areas yes. so what right. so when I what I I will say as we think about all five of you when we're pre getting a presentation we have to get a little bit of all five of you into the presentation, yeah. right? We have one board member who needs the numbers in a visual format, has stated that multiple times, and so we have to make sure when we get in there, it's a visual format. We know that Ms. Macero, she's gonna want some historical information in there. She's gonna want people to know, like, this is where we started now, this is how we got to that place. And so all of those things we have to utilize when we're getting <coughs> ready to, to get a pr presentation for you yeah. so for you you and every time you and I meet you say the same thing I just want it straight to the point just give me the numbers <laughs> and give me the facts like give me the facts actionable things right so the, but if we were to do that then we would lose some of the board members so we have to add some of that historical yeah. information in there we have to have some of the statutory information in there because Dr. Conklin's always going to go to you know statutorily what is required well, you know, why we're doing this you know <coughs> so we have to keep all of those things in mind when we're creating something for you right. That's a nightmare. well you just highlighted the value <laughs> of a board because it's diversity Absolutely. of thought yeah. and different perspectives that help us get somewhere yeah. right and uh, collectively we're much wiser than we are individually yeah right? I 100% yeah. agree with that yeah 100% <laughs> So, okay, well, that was a good conversation there. And mm -hmm. uh, so, I, but that's encouraging to know that on the backside, you are thinking along those lines when, <laughs> when, it, when it comes to the table. So, 
And many of the, the, the things, honestly, we can go through and identify, okay, this is the topic. We know that Here's the, the question that, yeah. we need to have this information in it because here is the question that's going to come up or yeah. here's the thought process. You know, I think that um, especially like Ms. Chong, Ms. Chong, you may not speak as much, but I can already identify here are the things that she's going to want to know in yeah. that. And she's going to be listening for those pieces. And if it's not included, she's going to ask. But if we include all those things, it's. It's, you know, it's going to be there and she's going to sit back and she's going to, you know, she'll, she'll, okay, it's yeah. good. And so we go through that when we're preparing something to make sure it's going to meet the needs of the board as a whole. And in order to meet the needs of the board as a whole, you have to consider yeah. all of the members of the board. So there is sometimes some fluff in there and sometimes the fluff is in there because there are other board members that like fluff. That not necessarily <laughs> like and the fluff. Is fluff. No, 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 I know, I know. I know. I know. I'm I'm only only know. That's what I call it, but it's not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm only worried. <laughs> make it like I, I come. We could get to the point a little bit um, quicker. What we also, so that you know, is if there's a new topic that's coming up, we try to consider: is this a topic that has been heard before by this board? If it is a topic that has been heard of before by this board, the then value. that is going to influence the way we create the presentation. If it's a topic that has not been heard before by this board, then we are going to include some of that historical information bringing us up to the point where we are so that every board member feels like I have all of the information that I need to act on this thing before me. Who cares if it's gone before 15 <clears throat> boards before us this is the first time it's before this board. Here's the information that you need to know so that you can make the decision as a board as to the direction that you I provide. think that's very wise of you, Lashaka, because there are superintendents that I've seen never learn that, right? That value of looking at each perspective. Sometimes that you can get in that position where it's like, well, let me count to three and I'm okay. Yeah. But I appreciate the fact that you recognize looking at all of the needs for whatever information it might be for the board members <coughs> to include that. At least have it on your mind as a thought. Yeah. And I would just add, obviously you represent the community. The community is going to be much more engaged with the presentation that hits right. you know, different aspects, mm -hmm. whether it's qualitative versus quantitative yep. mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. data. Right. Um, so I have another thing I'd like to have us cover also is just um, about uh, the chairman role and communication, and um, and I was gonna I, I was gonna meet with you individually, but I thought this would be better here because any one of us at any given time could sit in the seat. So, um, and I think what is important to know uh, as a for, as a chair is some of the do's and don'ts, especially when it comes to communication and sunshine, um, and how that can happen outside of. The workshop or the or, or the, the business meeting. Mm -hmm. So, and, and any other um, advice that you can give um, as somebody sitting in this role? Sure. So, my goal is that <coughs> the entire board is informed. Um, the most efficient way to do that is get us all together in the sunshine, and everybody hears it all at the same time. Mm -hmm. <coughs> if a board member asks me a question uh, about a legal issue. Uh, my preference would be, you know, sort of as we're wrapping up that conversation and we get to the bottom of, of what that um, question would be is, do I have your permission? Can I share this out with all the board members? Because I think it was a great question. They would all benefit and want to make sure the superintendent. So everybody's operating with the same set of facts. So that's, um, there may be something highly unique or very individual um, that either doesn't need to be shared or they would ask me not to share that. Uh, and I would keep that confidence unless the judge tells me that I would have to disclose it. Um, uh, I certainly can't be uh, a conduit of information between you. I can't poll board members and go to the superintendent like, we got three votes for this. Um, would never do anything like that. Um, but I am, I am going to strive to keep all of the board members on the same page with yeah. the same information. That's okay. If that's covering. Yeah. So then what, I guess what I'm saying is, so if, in order to keep the board informed, mm -hmm. um, it, are there, you know, I've, I've heard we can do 
you know, one-way communication but as the chair, mm -hmm. right? How, what is the, the most effective way for me to communicate and keep the board informed mm -hmm. without crossing sunshine laws? Sure, and we'll, we'll, if you receive any kind of communication from a board member, the basic idea is let's not respond back to mm -hmm. it right. because one that way. could generate yeah. um, something questionable. Um, you know, the, the gold standard or the, the legal line is um, any matter that's likely to come before the board for a vote or for consideration can't be discussed outside of the sunshine. Um, whether uh, if someone just chiming in in a response saying, hey, I think that's a good idea, mm, you know, ha we've gotten a lot closer to that line yeah, than I'm yeah. comfortable with. So we um, would need to do that. Um, I think communication from the superintendent can also help. Um, in this manner and obviously the whoever is the chair and the superintendent are going to be in close communication so sometimes that communication can just be better handled from the superintendent yeah. um, but let's avoid reply alls on oh, yeah. any kind of <laughs> yeah, that was another <laughs> question sometimes we get um, we, we will get emails that it's my role as a chair to answer the general inquiries mm -hmm. um, and so but they'll we will be copied on all of the board members will be copied on it um, so you're saying in that instance, irregardless, just reply directly to the to the person that is responding, uh, is it, or can I reply all on something like that? If it was a, a he's parent answering. Complaint, so a parent it, yeah, complaint, uh, mm -hmm. constituent. Mm -hmm. yeah. If there's a constituent concern um, that was sent to the whole board, sent to the whole board, I think the chair could then say. Um, on behalf on behalf of the board thank you for your inquiry I'm directing it to the superintendent so then everybody would know mm -hmm. hey that I, I don't need to chime in because the chair has Correct. responded that to was it. my intention right okay and, and I think that that's not in any way close to that line that we talked about um, indicating how you would handle a particular issue gotcha. so, but it, it's just informative that that inquiry is being addressed mm -hmm. so if I respond to that and I and in that email I, I uh, if say the superintendent has not been copied on that, mm -hmm. if I reply all and say I have referred you to Superintendent Moore mm -hmm. <coughs> within there, that would be okay communication for everybody to know. Yes. And now if then if, if, if for for updates on that now, would those need to be individual or could the superintendent still copy us all on those responses without any issues there? I would be fine with one way communication <coughs> from the superintendent to the board members. That did not flow back. Mm -hmm. As long as we're not responding to those as right. a reply all at that point, mm -hmm. right. then we should be okay. We would, we would just, if we had an issue, we would directly contact Superintendent Moore about the yes. results uh, or exactly. input. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I, I think so, that's a good way of working. All right, so that'll be kind of, that's how we'll, we'll, we'll manage that from, from here forward on those matters. Okay. I, I think too it's important that you do the FSBA chairman. It workshop. It's great training. You know, yeah, you no, need that, not, that, summer not conference. That'll that help. That'll that help you answer a lot that, of these experiences. That, um, it's a full day. Yeah, yeah June. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I usually yeah. will train when there's something that directly applies. You know, um, I, I jump on those, especially. I found like the the finance one yeah, finance very helpful. Mm -hmm. Still a fire hose of information, but uh, <laughs> it is a lot. It's actually come, you know as time has gone on, it, some of the things I learned are finally are where yeah. the dots You're were connecting. It, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it helps. Yeah, yeah. so no, no doubt. Yeah, um, it's so, hard. Yeah, I, I I I will when that's available take that. Yeah, it's good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, okay. Is there any other? Um, advice for the uh, chair role, uh, whether it be through um, during meetings or um, anything that's kind of general in, in, in uh, it, it appears to be on track, okay. so. Great, well just if, if you see something that I can improve on, let okay. me know. <laughs> All right, sure, sure. <laughs> but uh, we'll just keep it moving forward. Okay. All right, any other uh, questions or? Nope. I'm thinking about other things that we have in the next couple hours. <laughs> right. Yeah. Are we doing this or not? Um, what is our time? Half hour, tops. Half hour? Yeah, I'm you will have lunch. Um, lunch will be here um, at 12 o'clock. Um, it is sandwiches this time for sure. Last time I said it was sandwiches, it was pizza. This time <laughs> it is definitely sandwiches. Yeah. Um, what I would say, we have, if, if there aren't any other 
um, conversation for Mr. Delaney, then we could start this here and see how far we get, yeah. and then if we need to come back again, we'll do it again. But it just it's all we, we may be able to knock this out in 30 minutes if there aren't a lot of changes. changes. Yeah. So yeah. Do you have a copy of it? And I'm going to slide over. Um, it's, you have, uh, uh, Lorraine had uh, emailed all of us. If you look at And her. if uh, I can have, we yeah. can make some copies of it. Like this morning? No, no. Well, you can just, there was a few, it was, uh, before the last meeting. Well, you you just, will you, you search ask her for Ariel to make copies up. of the um, updated but if you want to, procedures if you want to manual? Watch, if you don't want to do it on your computer or your phone, we can get you a, a printed copy. Yeah, we're going to grab a printed copy right now. To, to take individual advice or a comment no. from the okay. specific case. Okay. So uh, everybody has a copy in front of them right now. Okay. So then we'll proceed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just uh, I just but googled go Lorraine's email and it, it, it's a PDF attachment. Yeah, no worries. So. Uh, okay. There you go. I mean, okay. It's really not a lot in the beginning anyway because those are we have our mission and our vision. They're not going to be changing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you have the strategic plan which we're right. getting ready to. In March. Finish. Yeah. Right. So. Right. So we're going to have to revisit that part. And we did make a change to the one goal. I'm, I'm not sure if it's in your um, copy there, but we changed it to resilience and well-being. We did make that change on on everything. Okay. Um, yeah, the social emotional well-being um, goal. The title is resilience and well-being. Resilience. Yes. And well -being. Yes. That was um, that was the direction earlier in the year from the board. That's good. That's right. Yeah, mine still has the old. Yeah, yeah. Mine yep. So we'll make sure that that. Resilience and will be. Yes. The only thing I noticed, just going through quickly, is on goal six communication. At the last statement, it has for upcoming half penny, and since that's already been passed, <coughs> we just need to change the language there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that's a ten year. Yeah, that's ten years. Yeah, so, for a while. Yeah. Yeah. So upcoming is going to be nine years away. <laughs> so yeah, that yeah. Was, we should just change the language. That's all I have there. Um, but you know, we do have the we do have the oversight committee. Would that be covered under six B increase outreach within our community to the community organization? For the half penny. Well, I just say we're going to be having feedback from that. Right. So maybe we find a way to maybe change that language to be more focused on the oversight committee. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. That, that needs to be changed. Okay, that was, uh, All right. So then, yeah, we'll move past the strategic plan. There. Yes, because that will come before you. Okay. <clears throat> and then it goes into the accountability. <laughs> Authority of a role and authority of board members, powers and duties, of statutes. What's it what's it called again? The document. 
procedure manual. School board operating procedure manual. Just pull off Lorraine. She's yeah, it's name. A, it'll, email it'll Lorraine. One of the last emails you got from she her. She has you, it you there. You search her email address. Yeah. I feel like we've beat this thing to death. I mean, not you guys. I, well, we've been at a lot so longer. In, like in our first meeting, we didn't have a lot of changes yeah. other than just some language. So yeah. I, I don't. I don't. Know. I don't yeah, I can see a lot. What I what I'd like to say is that if anybody, what we can do to kind of make this a little more efficient is if anybody has specific changes, we can jump to those sections mm -hmm. and then. Not um, well. You're going to have to have specific changes on. Well, we may or we may not on B. The superintendent and school board attorney because that has to be that's where where story. are you page eight page eight it's at the bottom because we don't know exactly what we're doing there yet so that I'm saying eventually that's going to have to be updated we're not in a position to do it now I don't yeah we can't change no, it. we can't do that now I'm just saying that is going to have to be updated right. at some point that's a good point that's just just for a mental note yeah we're yeah, going to have to do that and the same thing with two that's going to have to be updated somehow. Because mm -hmm. that, that just, and it might be just adding and deleting a little bit of language. But we can't do it at this point, but those are going to have to be done. Uh. You know, one thing in here that I, was a little bit bothersome to me, and, I, and I'll, I'll be, I, I, I don't have the reference point on here, but when it was how we deal with anonymous complaints, right? And, and yeah, that's a big I understand that we cannot use our resources to investigate every single anonymous complaint, mm -hmm. but we should be putting in some sort of a, 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 a tracking system if, if we don't have it in place already to see if there is a trend in these. And obviously, if something rises to the level of a threat or safety or security, that's, you know, we have to you know, look at that right away. But if it's a general uh, inquiry about, hey, I, I think there's fraudulent activity happening or uh, this, that, anonymous, we should be tracking that to say, hey, um, we've now gotten three emails along the lines of this anonymous uh, report. It may be something we might want to start looking into. Um, and I have heard of other districts uh, do, using a, a third party service that is, um, and it, it is truly anonymous because the, the district does not actually uh, receive the information. It goes to that third party and that third party filters it to the district and then it, it, it all gets logged in there. Um, and it, this, is, this, is, this could be for any kind of thing, whistleblowing, I mean, there's really no limit on it, but it is a way that people can share things that might be going on that are afraid to be persecuted or, um, you know, because you know a lot of things do come page forward. Page 17. It's anonymous. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Okay, you found, you found a page. Say, page 17. It's K. Yeah. I, I, th I knew it was in here because I had seen it, but I didn't know where. Not as phone calls and or letters. Thanks for finding that. Yeah. What is the reason that we are not acknowledging anonymous complaints? We've never acknowledged anonymous. I think, I think staff <laughs> probably has looked into anonymous letters, but as a board, if it's not sent to you, because you basically, I mean, you could be down a rabbit hole every week. Yeah. Yeah, I agree that we, we can't necessarily, every single thing that comes in, but something does have some merit there, there should be something in place because if, if an anonymous comes in today for something and then another one comes in another two months on the same thing we might not even remember the, of that last complaint to see that oh this seems to be a pattern here right um, that's really what I'm talking about but um, the, the I mean again it's like again I, I remember previous council said you know it, if we get something anonymous, who are we responding to? We don't even know who's on the other side that we're right. responding to. I get that argument, but I think we should have a, a, a practice of at least acknowledging So if something comes back around and it now becomes to the level where it might pique the interest of the district, 
or the board, you look back and you go, wow, we did get maybe three or four mm -hmm. uh, inquiries about that matter. Um, I don't know, so Will. I think it's a, it's a kind of a Pandora's box. Well, we do have the school surveys. Like, we just had one, and mm -hmm. you could write anything in there if you wanted to. Um, it was anonymous. I think yeah. it is. Well, anonymous, yeah. people don't really believe these days that in, in that, that big the, brothers yeah, watch it's it's too easy to track. I mean, yeah, yeah it's anonymous. Yeah. You didn't put your name, but yeah. now they, they can, can track, track it back it. to your IP address yeah, exactly. and everything. And um, so, it's just one of those things that you know. I I, I went to a, a an event. Uh, this was this was quite a while ago, and there was a superintendent there, uh, or, or a former superintendent um, at that time, and said they had put that, and they had uncovered a, quite a bit of. Um, financial fraud and things like that within their organization. They were a much larger organization than ours. Um, but again, it was through these anonymous tips that these came through. So um, it's something that I, I think we should be thinking about uh, on the go forward, because that, that's always kind of made me feel a little bit unsettled since we moved past that in the last meeting. So, um, so I, I would like to address that in some way, shape, or form, some options. So maybe it's not through how you as a board operates. Right. Maybe this is something that needs to come up at an actual board meeting um, or request for us to provide information to you or look into this to bring to mm -hmm. you as a board and outside. Because this is just how you as a board will operate your procedures. Right, how we respond. Yeah. Well, I, I, th I agree that it's not necessarily a board level review of this, but from a district level. It wouldn't be like we're going to go well, in there. Well, they'll like somehow they need to make maintain them and review them and yeah. if they get well, every time we would get an anonymous just yeah. Yeah. I think that staff, if there's probably. any repetitive I think if if it's something that you want to get more information or give us direction on I definitely would say let's not continue to have a conversation mm -hmm. now right. since this is just for procedures and then let's bring this up in a, a, an appropriate meeting that we could actually have that discussion and we could take action yeah I think that um, yeah, we're going to do something. As a board, though, that if we're talking about the board side of this, I do agree that this is not a, an area we want to individually dive into. Yeah, no, um, right. Unless somebody has a real concern, they can bring it forward. But right. we should leave this to staff. Have this. We'll talk about if, if this is worthy yes. of bringing back to, to staff. staff. I agree. I agree. Well, yeah. Okay. All right. Page, so we'll move past that. Page 11. Okay. This has been at page 11, and it's under board meeting workshops board meetings and workshops and it would be page 11 bullet one two three a couple, last year a couple years ago we put in place where at the business meeting people could only bring public comment to agenda items yeah, this, this has been out. a bone of contention to our constituents for a very very long time because they would like to speak about anything at the beginning and then if they want to stay around they can speak about anything at the end um, I don't know what everybody's feelings are on that but that was something that was placed before I was chair so mm -hmm. it, yeah and it's something that we have heard yeah, issues I was going to bring that up too I mean I don't I, I don't have an issue one way or the other I don't yeah. either well I, here oh, go ahead Christine I think Sorry. we're in a there's nothing real chaotic happening, you know. Right. Right. right like COVID was a couple of Correct. years ago. So yeah, COVID and yes. I think people should have that opportunity. And we do allow that at, at the workshops at the beginning and the end, which is which is closer to the beginning of the right. the business meeting. Yeah. It's it's my feeling that, you know, that that is our business meeting. We've already we've already met uh, in public twice before that. Uh, pe people have had opportunity. To speak about anything to us before and I know sometimes there's a convenience factor because of after work right mm -hmm. uh, but we have to get our business done uh, it's very important that we get through that with our clearest mind I, I do I want to hear from the public but I think the reason why we come and invest the time in these workshops which is my understanding not every a school board does as, as much before a meeting as as we may do that we create the opportunity for them to see what's happening, where we're headed, and to, 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 to participate beforehand so that when we get to that meeting, we can run through that meeting as efficiently as possible. And I would say, in my experience, all of our business meetings have moved fairly quick and efficient through consent and other things. 
So it, it's not like it's, a, I mean, I know that there's some city council meetings that are going to 11 o'clock at night. Um, I mean, we, it, you know, God forbid we have a hot button topic. We cannot be held up the business of the board till 11 o'clock at night. Um, we, we've been there. I know. <laughs> I, I watched them. Oh, we've, been, we've there. been there. And we've, we've been and, there. And we've been there late. Uh, you with, haven't, with, but yeah, we have. Yeah, well, we had one with the with the with the, uh, with the pool. We were there. Oh yeah, that late. was that was late too. Yeah, so I mean, I was it, late the other one. It, it happens, but you know, but that was an agenda, that was on the agenda, and, and those folks came during that time and, and voiced their on on the business at hand at mm -hmm. that moment. But I, I think also it's a matter of communicating, uh, maybe to, you know, through the beginning of the meetings. To the community that there are other methods for you to get heard also mm -hmm. that you your physical presence is not the, the only way right Quite there are right. electronic communications that can be done letters can be written and we do get them I mean there's often we come in here and here I have letters from from folks that wrote in still mm -hmm. snail mail right mm -hmm. uh, letting everybody know all the options um, <laughs> so I, I personally think that we, we have a good thing in place here at the moment but if if it doesn't, and I, I don't know that we've had uh, a lot of th that uh, extra public comment at the end um, since I've I, been I don't have a problem yeah. either way. I mean, we did it for that purpose so we could get our business accomplished first because it was a business meeting. That was the entire reason we came to well, this decision. And we did it because, because of our meetings previous were yeah, situation. But <coughs> I don't think it would be that much of a delay either way. If we if we just went ahead and allowed them speak on anything, they still only get three minutes, you know. And I don't think it's going to set our business meeting back, but it certainly would make constituents happy. Yeah. My biggest so. concern would be like an hour of comments, and then yeah, this feeling of being rushed to get through our business yeah. and not and they're not really and that's true, like and that's a possibility and too. And like I said, I could go either way. Yeah. I just think we need to make and sure we're on the same page. We are there to deal with the business of that night. So if we're hearing comments on another on uh, things that are not even being voted on that night, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's 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 not necessarily relevant to the, to the agenda. So. Um, I know it's important to those that are coming forward. Uh, I, I think we would. I think we should leave it the way it is right now. But what I would be open to, if we felt that the, the, that the demand for this increased, was to to, to cap a period of time up front um, right. for uh, uh, non-agenda items, and then therefore, uh, I'm just. I'm, this is not the necessary the model, but I'm just going to say if we put a cap of 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. The state legislature does that. Yeah. Too. yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, exactly. I, mean, I think we should do this as a response. Although to I hate when the state legislature do yeah, that. I know. <laughs> but it should be a response to a need. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Right now it doesn't seem that, but we can revisit that any time and make that change at any time. Yeah, it's been, it keeps coming and uh, raising its ugly head. Yeah. And, <laughs> so it's and, something I, to and, consider. I, and I've heard other models too where like say within that 30 minutes if you have if the maximum is three but you have X amount of people you divide up the time so that they, they can yeah, have us okay. right they I'm may right. not get three I'm minutes right, right. <laughs> yeah so you so the state you, board definitely does that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so again great 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 idea but I, right. I don't I am not seeing the need for it at the moment to open that up front at, at personally right can the chair uh, say you know, we're gonna ha allow like 30 minutes to come in. This Can you make that change on the fly, the cap, Mr. No. Delaney? Um, For public I, comment. What I would recommend is that you do it by policy. That you have a policy that would be flexible based on the number of people signed up to speak. Um, so it doesn't appear ad hoc. Instead, you're going back to back policy to that may have triggers based on how many speakers you have. Some districts do limit to say there's a maximum of 15 minutes for non-agenda public comment um, right at the beginning of the meeting and you know lots of times there's two or three people that may have some sort of community update type information um, what I have heard in the past is that partly it's to be um, cognizant of staff who maybe don't need to stay really late because they only have one item on the agenda or, right. or whatever it might be that too, and, and then I would say I don't personally think it's a, a great idea to put that on the chair, whoever sits that role at the moment. Because what it does is that if it's a, if, let's just say it's a, it's a topic that the chair feels strongly about uh, in, in any direction, 
they could be potentially looked at as, a, oh, you're allowing that public comment to go because you seem to like that, that issue. That would that would be my worry. Right, mm -hmm. and so I, I think it has to be a clear-cut policy. No, I agree. Uh, but I, 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 I have not seen it reach to the level of, of demand at the moment, but if, if it truly was <coughs> That situation, I think we could we could convene and, and, and change these rules at any time to accommodate the need of the community. But right now, if there's not, if we're not having a problem with it at the moment, then why do we need to change it? That's fine. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page yeah. because that will come back to us again. It's going to be a constant, especially when they yeah. their purpose basically is the fact people can get there early, say their bit, and leave. You know, but now they can't now. They have to come and wait till the end. And our meetings haven't been long. And hopefully we never get into that situation that we were in in the past. So we can continue on, but just keep it in the back of your mind. And, you know, I, I really think maybe at the beginning of the meeting, uh, maybe it, it, as part of the rules, as, as maybe just remind folks that there are other methods. And I would, I would argue that the, the, they would get a better response for their issue if they did send it in as an email because we respond immediately. I mean, and, and staff responds yeah. very, right. and so waiting 30 days to get to be heard uh, and then it just wait to uh, interpret your, your public comment um, is, the, is the slow way of getting results, right? So mm -hmm. um, maybe we can emphasize. And anybody who does come up for public comment and say that they want a follow-up, we do, staff, we do mm -hmm. follow up with them on whatever their public comment is. No, I think that's is. good. Uh, the thing that I find most frustrating about public comment sometimes is, you know, how we're not supposed to engage. That is so hard for me sometimes. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I mean, especially <laughs> me. You think? Right. I think but, the rest of us are pretty I, good at it. I think w <laughs> what I struggle with is if somebody comes up and they share information that is simply not true. true. Yeah. Um, that to me, that is grounds for a correction <laughs> right away. I guess but who, I get who, it. Who gives that? Know. Yeah. You, you, you've been good for the most part. Who, who gives that corrective response, right? Um, I would be fine with the chair giving. Yeah. Just somebody yeah. needs to correct the chair record, or, be, yeah. or the superintendent, because right. if that information, that false information, is not addressed or corrected during that meeting immediately, it then, on then it true. is the truth. Yeah. The yep. public buys no, you're right. it as you're the right. truth. And that is a concern, but the, uh, my, my fear is, <laughs> my understanding of why we don't comment directly is because essentially... We get into a back and forth. Right, well not even that, again, that that could be um, an, an, an issue because now, you know, if it, if it involves a topic, you know, that individual board member's response could kind of um, lend to to where you it just and opens the, the door to a public fight, right, and it's right. So. And I think, I mean, when you do respond, I, I completely get when it's something that is um, completely not true. However, then when you don't respond, it gives off the impression that it's truth, but maybe it's not truth. We just need to look into it a little bit mm -hmm. uh, more. So, um, uh -huh. Yeah, I, I think as a board, my reflection is that when there have been things that have been um, that rise to the level of they need to be addressed in p closing comments, someone has yeah. said, yeah. Superintendent, can you make sure in your closing comment you address this? Portion? You're 100 percent right. The frustration that I have is the person or the people who may have shared that information. They left. They walked out the door. Yeah, they're gone. So, so they never true. get the truth. Well, they may not, true. but we follow up with them. If yeah. they've said, yeah. the yeah. public will get the truth. Yeah. Yes, but they do leave. Right. I personally would like to see those things addressed as soon as possible. I mean, just like with the trip that just happened, you immediately spoke up and said we're handling it, and I thought that that was fine. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, well, it does make it, it does help. If, if my, I think what, after they comment, if a board member has a concern of the content that was said for, that needs clarification, to just say, can we please, yeah, clarify. Can we, That's a good idea. That way, we just have we have one voice coming out, and um, and then also they are going to. And, well, we uh, can call them. can assure that reassure them. We're yeah. going to follow up with you, yeah. so you're going to right. get that. We can have a point of information. That would be the yeah. time to call yeah. point yeah. of information, yeah. superintendent, and then we'll all know that that's what it's about. But it's a point of information, and that would help. Okay. 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 That's how we'll deal with that. All right, the other, let me see what else. Uh, liaison. 
page 13. I would like to see under B where school liaison assignments a bullet added that would say in the event we all are not I'm on page 13 we're all and not available I get it <laughs> yeah, I mean oh, wow. I understand okay. we're all not available but for the to make all the meetings I don't expect any of us to do that but I do think that perhaps if you cannot make it it's worth a shot to see if maybe somebody else is available to take that meeting covered and that's okay and that's Mr. for Delaney, community right if we throw an email out to board members that say you know I can't go to a SAC meeting a SAC at, meeting yes. could somebody cover for me is yes. there anybody is there yeah no, we're okay. just asking for somebody to go to a meeting and you can do that and, and we can all try to help each other because it's really a valuable piece to our community mm -hmm. and when they don't get that service they get annoyed and they don't think we're hearing or listening or participating so we can try I yeah. mean we, you know, we all have responsibilities, but there are times when we have to cover each other. Yeah, and there's other, like I, I, I for the um, for the auditorium governance yeah. board, I couldn't be there in presence, but they had a Zoom link, so I was able to Zoom. Right. Yeah. Meeting. Sometimes you can, right. but sometimes and, you can't and, do and, that uh, either. Exactly. And, uh, you know? and and if you can't, like for example, Indian Trails scheduled their their SAC meeting on the same night of our school board meeting. There you go. So, you know, you, you I, I, I sent an email to them saying, hey, can you give me some updates? So that mm -hmm. there are other ways you can engage uh, mm -hmm. before you, yep. you actually have coverage. Yep. Um, some meetings are more meaningful than others. I mean, I, I've been to some SAC meetings that we walked in. There was, uh, okay, call it to order. Okay, boom, goodbye. And it was like, you know, yeah. there was nothing going on. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, it shouldn't be uh, like that, but yeah. yeah but I, I, it doesn't make it any less important yeah. for your presence. I'm not trying to say that. No. Right? So, you yeah. know what I mean? They're, I like, may or may not have said <laughs> in on some of those. <laughs> Even if you can't make one of the meetings, you know, just touching base with the principals, there's other things that they always have going on. Like I just visited Wadsworth. Yeah, and, there's know, things happening. Just yeah. to be present. But yeah, and, and to make that, and then we can make it to the general public, and it shows that we're earning our keep. And, I, and, yeah, and that's it is, what you, uh, do. you know, we're accountable also to our liaison assignment. So if they feel they're being underserved, you know, right. they can reach out to the superintendent. And, but we can, uh, but we can like, help. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We can I, I easily help. We, we, we try uh, and help. And that will avoid all those issues. Or we yeah. can, and like a lot of times, I know there's certain meetings in the future I'm not going to be able to make. Mm -hmm. I'll put an email out if anybody can cover this for it. But you guys have done that. You've done that on a, a major. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. we've done this in the past. Yeah, especially so, if you clearly are going to be out of town. You know yeah. it ahead of time. Yeah, you, you can know, set it up. The, exactly the so that. that was the only thing I saw there and the last thing I think I saw we took care of anonymous oh in so under social media a lot of that's going to change with legislation first of all <laughs> I don't know page, how they're gonna page do that. I don't need page 15 page 15 but we have to be aware of our social media you know um, I think number four is important avoid posting content that indicates you have already formed an opinion on pending matters we got to make sure we don't do anything like that all of us I mean yeah. that's probably one of the biggest problems I think for all boards today is navigating social media I've, it's difficult I've limited mine yes and then and then you all have to keep our records which I think we all know that by now that if you don't it never gonna happen but we have to keep our records that's all that and then we only need to change anything there I think what it says is pretty clear okay. uh, that's it that's what and I like, like I scanned it there you all may have different things too like to look at but that's what I saw of things that we needed to address the rest is pretty looks pretty good and I, and I would just also say at times you know we get excited about a, a topic and and sometimes we, we work, we're asking the district for things for, for more information. We should freely get all the information we need, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I really think when we're going to put staff to work, we should have some meaningful thought behind it on, for, that there's some outcome uh, in the future that's kind of, you know. I think we have something in here that, that well, we really two hours, no we should not be asking yeah. staff to do anything that requires more than I think we two, hour two hours yes right. and, and, and unless and you could bring it to the board the issue or topic or whatever it is and if a majority of us think yeah can you mm -hmm. go down this rabbit hole and check it out yeah. then they would do it Great. <clears throat> that's about that's all that I noticed, and it's 12 o'clock. So okay. for, for the purpose of, of the document, 
Um, there was communication around the half cent. We'll look at that to see if there's some wording. language yeah. with the oversight. Yeah. Um, there may be a need to make some adjustments in the area of um, legal. Um, once we identify what our structure Correct. will be, um, there was no change with the anonymous as far as the board action. Um, yeah, the board action. There may need to be some um, additional discussion. So there's not anything that has to be actually changed as far as. Um, the document goes right now, but it was just really conversation. We did have conversations around the uh, public comment. The board chair will clarify at the beginning of the meeting around public comment, receiving feedback back, or other ways that they may um, express their, their comment. Yeah, I still would put a bullet under liaisons just and for the new, bullet. I'm sorry, and it's I did not, not for this that. group. We've had that conversation, but it would be for anybody else who's new to the board, then they would know right away. Okay, yes. mm -hmm. that would make sense. That's all. I did not write that down. I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Chair, can yes. I ask a question. Um, I see here on the request for information and data on the second bullet, it sort of directs board members or encourages board members to meet with district level administrators. Uh, if that is a process that's working for the board, I certainly don't mean to insert myself. I have seen superintendents in the past say they would request would like those requests for meetings to go through the superintendent's office because uh, if one board member has a question there's a likelihood that a second or a third yeah. or maybe all five board members might have a similar question that will tie up an administrator in five different meetings uh -huh. and if there's a grant that's due or right. a budget that needs to be finalized or things like that um, sometimes I've seen boards try to request run those requests through the superintendent so just for consideration. Okay, so where was that? Where, 15 is it? The okay. second bullet point okay. under um, request for information. Yeah. Oh, 15 or what, what page? Yeah, it's page 15. Okay. Request for information, oh, okay, that data. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I mean, you create a problem if it's not one. I'm okay if it goes directly to senior level staff and yeah. myself. I think that's. But I, you should always be CC'd on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. CC the superintendent. Okay. Got it. That makes sense. Done. That's good. All right. Does anybody else have anything else to add? So we, we knocked this out. Lunch. Gee, we did it. Yeah, okay. We're done. Good. That's our annual review. Yes, <laughs>